My first car in the automation campaign, the Weno CB, sold pretty well. It made a decent profit in its first year and sold about 10,000 units. Now I want to further expand the company by creating a new car for the manufacturer. Hey guys, it's Tries here and let's continue managing my car company. So as I paused in the year of 1947 in the seventh month, which I believe this is a July, Currently, we're at $375 billion in the bank for our company, and we made about $3 million from selling our cars and doing all this good stuff of our expensive car production and engine production. At about $5 million for the engine, and exactly $15 for the car production, while making $22.6 billion for the CB, and about... Mm, pushing $400,000 in interest. So $23 billion in revenue and twenty dollars in expenses, leading up to about $3 million in profit for July. And we're not going to be doing a facelift for this car. I'll probably cease production like 1948 or 49 or something like that. So let's create a new car on here. I'll probably reuse the engine on stuff. So new car project. Click on this bad boy. And this will be a bid to a large family car for Japan. So let's click on the family car level and we'll design it ourselves. So for this car body, I'm going to be using this 1945 sedan that's 2.6 meters in wheelbase and it's a four-door and all that good stuff. So for the chassis, panel material, all good stuff. It's pretty much work with like the CB, so a steel panel material with a ladder type of chassis with a steel chassis material. And good old front launch too, just pretty much the usual for most of this part here until we can afford like the more better stuff like aluminum and all that good stuff. And the front suspension, let's check this out here. I tried out solid axle coil before. We'll try out solid axle coil for now, and probably a double wishbone in the back. And for the engine, let's see if I can reuse the Type Q engine, which is a 2.2 liter inline four engine, make it 64 and a half horsepower and 103 pounds foot of torque. What if I just double click on this? I mean, it'll work, but will it actually work work, like financial-wise, if my uh, factory can keep up with the production of a new car and a brand new engine, and all that good stuff. So, drive type, rear drive with a manual three-speed transmission with the top speed, it says now about 90 miles an hour. Let's be like before, 80.8 miles an hour, yes, 80.8. I swear this is going to be my miracle engine for the, the era of just having this 2.2 liter four-cylinder engine, so I don't have to make like an inline six or nothing like that, or a three-cylinder. It's like the next decade or whatever. So for the tire type, cross by hard, long life tires with the front or rear tire with. I mean, this looks a little bit too big. Maybe, yeah, this is a little too big. 155s front and back. 155s front and back will do. And as per usual with the front or rear brakes, drum type of brakes. Put this up to 225s up front. Lower the brake force. Keep it as is. Rear brakes, 185, I guess, 190. And drop the rear brake force, and for the aerodynamics like the under tray, no under tray because it's not an off-road vehicle whatsoever. And the brake airflow, 10 again. And for the interior, this is going to be a little bit more towards like the semi-premium side of things. So, do we unlock the radio right this year? Oh, no, we don't. One more year until we get a standard radio system. So, standard and none yet again. And this will be a five-seater, so two seats in the front and three in the back which will be standard for this trim level and the more luxury trim metal uh, level with a premium seats and premium AM radio. And for the safety aids and all good stuff, let's do like before, a uh, manual recirculating ball type of steering with the standard 1940 safety standards, and here we go. Suspension, standard 22 passive, and start off with a normal preset because, uh, there we go, now we're good. So it's not a family car whatsoever in terms of demographics, what are we missing out of this? Comfort. Big time on comfort. I guess I probably have to change suspension. Maybe double wishbones front and back. Better. While this does increase the production units and engineering time, I don't know if this will become a huge factor whatsoever in terms of my finances being at roughly $400 million as of right now. It does improve comfort, would have been drivability, and mostly everything statistics wise, but safety is kind of a mid. And it's considered a fleet car and a family budget. I should probably rename this to a family budget car for the base trim. Oh, can, can I do that right now? Hold up, how can I change this to a uh, front tires wide high profile? Oh, give me a minute. Oh, just click it on this. We'll set the tar target demographic to a family budget, not just a regular family car. Now I got it. This should probably change it to a family budget once I sign off on this. And for the engine, I don't know if I should create a brand new engine. I mean, this does good in power and torque wise. I don't want this thing to become like too overpowered for this. Uh, this era. 
I mean, 64 and a half horsepower in the late 1940s, especially for that 2.3 beater wheelbase city car, the CB10. That was a little bit too much on the power side for that small of a car, but I think this engine will definitely suit for this car here, power and torque wise. So I think I'll probably leave it as is, probably for a next car, like next year or whatever, I will create a new engine, probably an inline six or something like that, or another four cylinder. And zero to 60 in 20.1 seconds. My golly. All right, so I got the car completely tuned in terms of the suspension and all that good stuff in general with the insides, outsides, brakes, wheels, and all everything else in general. So seeing it took pretty much that quick to build a car because of having a very good engine. So let's get ready to design this car as is with the exterior as well as an interior if I can build an interior of this car, which that time lapse will commence right now. So for the design of this car, building the exterior wasn't that bad compared to designing the Weno CB. For the front end, I added some circular headlights and turn indicators below them, along with the same chrome front bumper as the last car. Then, I cycled through what grille I want to put on this car. It took me some time, but I chose this long, rectangular grille with the chrome bars. I decided to remove them and add my own, which are thicker than the original one. After that, I added the same chrome strip above the 1LU logo and a pair of wiper blades mounted above the windshield, seeing that there is like a little chrome strip in between the middle of the windshield assembly. For the sides, I decided to add some suicide doors by placing the rear door handles from the CB next to the front door handles. Next, I tried to add some pizzazz by adding some chrome trim on the fenders and doors, I scrapped that and came up with an idea to add a large chrome strip below the doors similar to a Chevrolet Fleetmaster. For the back, it's pretty basic. I added the rear chrome bumper, a pair of brake lights, the license plate, trunk handle, and the Weno logo, kinda like the CB. Now for the interior, it wasn't that bad compared to designing the previous car. First, I tried to find what dashboard would be suitable for this car. It took me like 5 minutes to decide, but I chose the one that had the radio, the speedometer, and telemetry gauges all in one. Since the gauges were flipped the other way around, I simply used the same dashboard fixture and added the gauges and the steering wheel myself separately. I then added the rear bench seats, along with the front driver's seats, the floorboard, the pedals, a manual four shifter, unlike the 3 and a tree column shifter used in the CB. Finally, I repainted the car to this pastel orange color and added the Weno logo to the steering wheel. So, after getting everything done with this car, here's how it came out. This is the 1947 Weno SY. This large family sedan is the alternative to buying a small city car. If you want everyone to fit comfortably in this car, now you can with the Model SY. Alrighty, so finally I got the first ever sedan for the Winnow Car Company, the SY, complete up in here with the same Type Q engine. And I'm kind of debating for the premium model, the Lux model, is I should plan on putting maybe like a, like a six-cylinder engine here, like an inline six baby, to alleviate the flow of just continuously producing four-cylinder engines left and right, especially for the Type Q model. So anyways, despite these problems we got here, such as the front and rear tires having a very high profile and the front tires being quite wide, Let's sign off on this car and continue things off, which should bring me to the trim selection. Yes, it will. So clone trim car, and we'll call this boy, like the CB, Lux for the luxury model, the more upscale model. And let's edit the Lux model, which would be just some superficial changes, such as the main thing, the color of this paint job. So from the pastel orange to this darkish candy red looking color for the luxury model, and of course, with the interior, let's see how much this will change with the family budget car to a regular family car. So change this up. Uh, not a commuter car, are you kidding me? Okay, premium interior and a premium AM radio. Now it's a pure family car, unlike the family budget car, which will definitely be good. And seeing that we got a pimped out antenna, let's grab, I think, is this it? That's a short one, no. Yep, grab the big boy antenna up in here, not pointing directly into the street like some curb feelers. All right, here we go. Now we got a pure antenna, kind of like what you see in some older cars. Oh, it says there's a vertical big-ass antenna towering above the friggin' high of the roof. 
And you know, let's customize the interior a little bit better instead of having two my what the hell shifters do we got here? Weird. So I got the seats changed up. They're still the leather material. They're color matching per se, but they are darker than the car's color. And for the flooring, I did change this up to some black cloth instead of the gray cloth for the floorboard. So that will be the changes for this car, just to change the bit here with the coloring and the leather seats and an antenna fixture because of having a radio and premium interior seats and everything. So let's finalize this car, sign this bad boy off, and see what we have to do next. Oh nice, this did change up the family budget for the base model car and the regular family model for the luxury car. What if we change this to a... can I do this? Family premium. It doesn't look like it'll be good enough. What if I do so? Nope. Uh, mark it as a regular family car. This may not be the world's best idea. Let's keep the Type-Q engine and hold off on another video to making a new engine. And I'm not the world's best with the tooling, automation, all the rest of the sliders here, so let's manualize it. Let's automate this a little bit. Let's do a 52 there. 50-50 on process reliability, everything as is, so next would be the engine. I signed off on this engine, so this will still be the same. Okay, Type-Q, matching load, and fruit. Did I spell fruity right? No, I-T, not T-I. There we go, F-R-U-I-T-Y assembly plant. So currently we're making the C-B, and next will be the S-Y. So what do I do, just click and... Hold on. I can't advance, so I have to shut down the project for the C-B, right? Oh, just click on it. <laughs> Engine factory is overworked. God damn it. So after clicking on the base and the luxury models, now the batching load, or the type Q is it overworking itself, so it's below the batching load. Will this still be okay? It says we're making good profit, $3,800. Keep everything as is, so complete design. What will happen here? Okay, we're still in load with the type Q engine and the matching load of general production for the assembly plant. So what if I go forward? Okay, we're okay. So they expect some losses in the beginning, but make big buck over time, especially by year three if we break even after five years. That's just keeping the deposit and the cost of dealers, everything as is. So let's mark up to 4400 here, and 675 and calculate. Let's see here, from five to four, good money. Okay, but let's just ease this up a little bit. Let's do 438, just almost to the point not like lose money or don't lose money. And how about 30% for the luxury model? I guess this is probably good enough. So let's say break even at four years. So good profit there, lowers a little bit, and then big buck over time. I'm guessing four years would probably be the limit. And let's sign off on this car. So 55 months. Okay. I guess I'll complete this design. Keep this as is, and... <laughs> and let's maybe take out a loan about... Oh, come on. 30%. Exactly 30%. Okay. $10 billion. Payback 48... Uh, 36 months. If I increase, of course, this will take longer to pay back, but increases our interest and project costs and everything. So let's do 36 months for our payback period. And sign off on the selected projects. I don't know if this is going to be the world's best idea or not. So as my engineers are going to be engineering the SY Mark 1, let's play out and see what, what's what's going on here. So by month 8, micro profit, y month 9, some profit. I, I don't know if I have to like freaking do something with my uh, CB model, like make a facelift or whatever. But we're making good profit. Uh, country, what the hell happened here? So, 1950, country, uh, the country has opened their borders to trade with HQ country. What the hell is this? Hey, whose country? Da, da Hula? Not Da Hula, Da, da Hulia? Uh, uh, Chrysler. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's say the D-War country. I forgot how you pronounce it. Daluha. Daluha. That's how you pronounce it. <laughs> like, who, whose country was it saying? I don't know, it's probably just a regular bug in the game that the automation devs will have to fix once version 4.3 comes out for the light campaign. And not only that, we're over a half a billion dollars by just selling the frickin' CB, and we're doing pretty we're doing pretty good in uh, sales. But we're starting to decrease, so this car should be our replacement. So let's find out once it's done in 1952. Alright, our finances are starting to go down. What's our 
Oh, no. Fruity assembly plant has an issue. Higher factory refresh cost. Damn, $10 million. Let's find out here. Fruity assembly plant has started working on refreshing its tooling and performing any plan building maintenance. This job turns out to be larger than anticipated by your engineers due to higher plan factory utilization since signing off the SY. Either I could pay $6.85 million straight from cash to start the production of perfect condition as plan, refinance the loan by $6.85 million like cash, to refinance the original project loan, it'll cost $7.26 in the long run. If no loan was taken out, a three-year loan will be taken out. But there was a loan taking place. And not paying up will uh, result in the factory starting out in poorer condition. Well, we got over $500 million, so except the cash, what will happen here? Oh, damn, we're almost at $600 million. And there goes the losses there, so hold on a second. Uh, completed engineering. Like, where, what are my finances for this car? So they're doing good in pre-orders for the... Oh, this one dropped down for the luxury model, but pretty good in the base value. So we're at 600 million, doing pretty good there. And I should probably sign... Oh, it's already done with the CB. So once the CB was replaced by the SY, it's now the SY. It's taking its place. Okay. So 600 million there. Let's stop at the year of 1943. So here's November and December and a million dollars profit and stop. Another billion dollar profit at zero dollars of tax we paid over the next 12 months. Damn, we're living tax, tax free like it's Jeff Bezos or something. So let's check out my financial report right here. So we got quite a bit of expenses for car production, for the engine, and 3.5 and whatever. The construction of our factory, 16.7 and other 3.6. But a great amount of revenue for the SY model. At almost a quarter billion dollars. The CB model had 25 million dollars. The interest 9.1 million and the loan 2.9 million. So in a year we made 26.1 million dollars. That's not that bad. That's pretty good for starting out of this campaign. My first time being on this campaign. So we're going to stop right here for the campaign mode. So let's bring out this car, the SY, to Beam and G Drive to see what it's like if people in real life were to be driving this car. So here we are at the map of West Coast USA with a modded time trial loaded up, which is one of the West Coast USA's street courses that I've downloaded off of the repository, the BMG repository. And just like the last video of not doing the base performance test, we're gonna flat out do a time trial run with this vehicle around this here racetrack as so. So let's get ready to start things off here in three, two, one, I swear. What the hell? Why'd it go to second gear? Try this again. And go. Much better, unlike before. It had that wheel spin like the CB, but this car has less wheel spin due to the weight and all that good stuff with this car, and I swear. Are we gonna get a good 0 to 60 time? Mm, no, I got a corner. 58 miles an hour is our best. Handles a little better compared to CB. The CB, like, it wanted to over under. Captain Underpants. Now we're auto steering, thanks to me. Alright, much better. And also this time trial, I did quote-unquote complete a lap, is because I got this set to two laps, is because it's kind of weird how the course is set up in this game, is that you have to use two laps to complete a single lap, because this course is pretty much loaded up, as the first lap is like your hot lap, quote-unquote, and the second lap is your real flying lap, like the lap time that will actually count for your time trial run. Hard on the brakes, uh, like 60%, started to lock up there, and handling-wise, let's see here, hit me this right-hander. Much better than before, but a sloshy power graph, transmission, and all that stuff because of having a four-cylinder. I kind of thought putting up a six-cylinder, maybe like a 3.2, inline six, three-point something, but... Okay, make a left here. I thought I was supposed to go right. The right one, if you were to turn right, that would be the alternative course, the second layout. Which I believe is just the short course. This is one I got right. Uh, the one I got right here is the long course. Like I said, behind me would be the short course. We got the sweeping right-hander. Watch the oversteer. A little bit of oversteering right there, but we did counter back, and I believe there is a chicane. Yes, right here, right here, here. No, that is a turn. Crap. I messed up. But I think the next few turns, like a few turns away, is the chicane. I just right up ahead. Yes, right up ahead. So breaks. Once it's. It pretty much locks up, like, almost maxed out on the brakes, so fairly realistic brakes. Once you get down to, like, 70-80% on the brakes, that's where you start to see them lock up. So, fair enough. And here are the downhills with a chicane also. <laughs> Slow down a little. Oh, no. 
Oh, yeah, that was pretty close. It was kind of risky. I was going to pop the curb and get the most out of the track, but that was pretty risky. I still got all my four tires. No auto steering whatsoever. So we get the flying lap time, our second lap, quote unquote, first lap, whatever. Two minutes, 47 seconds, 321 milliseconds of a total time. Wait, what? Hold on a second. Oh, that's my lap right there. This is my finish lap. So, A, two minutes, 59 seconds, 283 milliseconds of a quote unquote, um, full time. Or total time of three minutes, 22 seconds, 280 milliseconds, just a hundred something. No, no, no. 10 seconds better than my third place car, which was the Fulcrum, my comeback car after after my ban from my Mr. Jack and Triple Zero days when I first created the Tri's channel. And cue the crash right now in the tire barriers. Terrible collision camera or camera, and there goes all the fixtures and everything else in general, so full time. And free roam also. So here's the steering wheel, the parts, the grill bars, the stuff with the interior and all in general. And of course the engine somehow still runs after a what, 50 something mile an hour collision? Can it still drive? I mean it's rear wheel drive, it could drive, but can it steer? Yes it could steer. It can auto steer to the right, and the second gear. And we got a 0 to 60 test in effect right now, can we complete this or no? Uh oh, okay, 58, 58 miles an hour. Nope, but there goes a drive shaft poking through the back passenger seats. If you're in the back passenger seats, you'll be dead because of this. So despite all that ordeal, let's go to main menu and the free roam button to drop this bad boy off at the car jump arena down a ramp to see if you can get a top speed 0 to 60 and all that good stuff with this car. So take it to the top of the ramp right now. So here we are at the top of the car jump arena with the luxury bottle. So we got the four light, a five light. So get ready to hit the gas pedal with the luxury bottle now. So here's this bright candy red luxury bottle of the Weno SY down the hill. Lagging the first gear, third gear, zero to 62. I like it at 7.46 seconds to 261.70 feet. Wait for the over rev risk. Will it do so or not? 120 is our launch speed. And just shy of landing in all four wheels, just shy of the 200 marker, so 150-ish meters was the point of impact. And over and as we go. Anybody inside getting car sick yet? Motion sickness? Gonna go over the pond? Or the water, lake, this and that? Yes, we are. Still going in over end. Over the... On top of the retaining wall, just resting as so after brushing the wall. Or the fence. And what is this? This is my door cards. What are these? My seats! My back passenger seats have landed all the way over here. My golly, mate. So a brief overview of the condition of this car. So we got the engine still running. Can we still put the power down? No, because that tire is jammed and this tire is above the ground. E-brake. Nice. Now for the last part of the video, as we accelerate, we're gonna uh, disobey the 70 kilometer mile an hour sign right there, our speed limit sign, to crash ourselves at a very high speed at the final bridge pillar at the somewhat bottom of the bridge. And we get it even worse, 0 to 62, technically 1 to 62 in 10.66 seconds, 477.79 feet. And our speed upon impact, almost exactly, pretty much exactly 100 miles an hour, or 160 kilometers per hour. And let's 32 times slow-mo this into this red bridge pillar with a red car, and... Crinkles up. Like that, that goes the rear drive, uh, drive shaft, the parts for the interior, which are the seats, the door cards, the dashboard, the steering wheel, more the door cards, and whatever this boy is, the license plate, so... full time. There goes all the debris. For the interior fixtures and all the 3D parts that I've put on with this car littered all over the highway here, this road. And the engine still runs. Damn, this is the most robust four-cylinder that I've ever made for the company. And will this be the most robust car? Can I accelerate? Oh boy. Somewhat oh boy? Well, we were going a little bit, so we're just going to be backing up. And flipping over to go to first gear into second gear. And still in the second gear, a lot of wheel spin, frame and uh, everything else is grinding on the ground. This is, uh, freaking. <laughs> this is outrageous. We're going 40 something miles an hour, getting all that wheel spin because not wheel spin, but the wheel lock it up because of what's going on here. But we're cruising pretty fair up in here, so what if I just crash the guardrail? 
it still runs just like that. This is stupid, but we're stuck, which is also pretty stupid. And it's still stuck, which again, is pretty stupid. Not anymore, as we got the car ASO and all the grill bars. Oh my god, the grill bars are gone. So with the successor of the Weno CB, the Weno SY, the large family sedan for the car company, while using the same four-cylinder engine, the 2.2, the Type Q engine, I'd pretty much say with this four-cylinder engine making almost 65 horsepower, this is actually pretty robust in terms of power, reliability, and everything else in general. So yeah, this car is pretty much a great success for the company of being my second car ever made for this campaign. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.